Okay, if you purchase the Hydro Grow Room complete, you're going to receive a 4x4 four four growing tray. And in the center of the growing tray, you'll have your two holes for your flood and drain fittings. And we're going to go ahead and connect those. The larger hole will be your drain on the fitting, and the smaller hole will connect to your pump. This is done so that the hydro grow room growing tray can never overflow. We're going to go ahead and put hydro grow room hose on the half inch fitting. Just like that. And the three fourths hose on the three fourths fitting. Just like that. Okay, we have a 40 gallon reservoir here. We're going to go ahead and put this in the center of the span. I like to bring the reservoir out a little bit and push the stand back just a little bit, okay? And make sure, you need to step in here, it should be okay. Make sure your stand is connected, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put the pump inside the reservoir. Note that the pump will have different fittings. You want the half inch fitting, which will connect to your half inch tube, which is connected to your flood drain fitting on your flood drain tray. The pump is in our reservoir and our power cord is going out. Once we have our reservoir and our pump inside the hut, we're going to then go ahead and put our uh, tray on top of the table. Make sure that it's well seated around the tray. If you need to, go ahead unzip the sides. Now the next thing we're going to do, including with your system, are self-tapping screws. We want to make sure that these self-tapping screws are drilled into our PVC rails. And the reason we're doing this, in case you put a heavy media in here, or you have a lot of water, or you have heavy plants, that we don't get buckling and bending of the tray. It will remain very solid. Okay, once we have our tray inside the stand, we're gonna go ahead and self-tap the tray down. Make sure the tray is secure to the outside rails. Okay, once we have our pump inside our reservoir, we need to connect our half inch tubing to the half inch fitting on top of the pump. Simply grab the tubing, and place it tightly onto the fitting. From here, we're gonna go around to the back and plug our timer, our pump timer in. So we're gonna take the power cord from the pump, connect it to a timer. If you're growing in Hydrotone, the recommended time is 30 minutes on, three hours off. You may need to, to adjust this time depending on what you're growing and the demands of your plants. If you're in rock wool, or coir, which is coconut husks, you may want to water once a day, but once again, the ultimate tail will be your plants. So know your plants and know what you're growing and know what their water demands are. Okay, here we are. We have our timer, and we're gonna put our power cord from our pump into the timer, and we're gonna be growing in hydrotone, so what we wanna do is each pin, black pin here, represents 15 minutes. Two pins, of course, is 30 minutes. So we're going to do 30 minutes on, three hours off, all the way around the clock. And once we have our desired time plugged into the timer, we will plug it in, but not until we have water inside our reservoir. You want to hold the back, flaps back, simply grab the strap and attach it here. Once we have our pump connected to our half inch tubing, 
We're going to go ahead and turn the water on and fill up this 40 gallon reservoir. We're using Hydrotone or Grow Rocks. An expanded clay aggregate holds a lot of oxygen, also holds moisture. It's a very good medium for rooting. It's also a very good medium uh, for hydroponic growing. So whenever you get, if you do decide to go with this medium, make sure that you rinse it off. There is some clay residual that you'll want to clean off before actually using in your system. Otherwise you'll have clay residual in your reservoir and it can sometimes be cumbersome to clean. So what we're gonna do right now is, you know, we have a small root mass at the bottom here. So we wanna make sure that this plant, even though it, I'm gonna probably bury it about halfway down into this pot, it's gonna be getting hit by the water when it floods and drains. So that's important. Remember, if you have smaller plants with smaller root masses, of course, you wanna make sure that those roots are getting hit by the water when it floods and drains. So I'm gonna actually start inside here. And not too much in this case, since we have a small plant, we're gonna let this plant kind of grow in. And now we're gonna just get the grow rocks all around this cube. We're gonna cover the cube so the light doesn't hit the cube and we don't have algae growing on top. All right, and that should do it. We don't wanna cover the plant in rocks, just the base of the cube. So it's gonna look something like this. If you have a larger plant or you're transplanting and you have uh, a larger root mass, just make sure that the roots are down in the bottom of the pot. And then of course you can put the plant towards the top of the pot. But as this plant grows up, we may fill in some of this with the rocks either way. Then we're gonna set it inside the hydro hut and we're gonna repeat this process until uh, all the pots are in the tray. Preferably before you put water in the reservoir, you want to put your lid on, and this is extremely easy. Just put it on top of here. Once we have our lid on, go ahead and put your fittings, your tube, through the holes here. The reason we put this lid on is so that light doesn't get to the nutrient. And then we're going to connect our tubing to our pump. For additional strength and support, once this tray takes on water, what we recommend is taking some self-tapping screws and connecting our L-brackets into our side of the tubes here. Once we have our reservoir filled, we're ready to put our nutrient in. First thing we're going to do is read the back of the label. So in this case, we need one teaspoon per gallon or five cc's per gallon. And we know we have 40 gallon of water in here. So we're gonna multiply five times 40 is 200. So we need 200 cc's of fertilizer. And with our measuring cup, that will bring me right there. So this is gonna be our seedling strength fertilizer. We're going to simply put this in here. And at this point, once we have our fertilizer inside our reservoir, I like to go ahead and plug the pump in. This does one thing. It, it's going to mix all that fertilizer up and then we're going to test the pH value and adjust the pH value if need be.